All right, so welcome back. This is going to be the last tutorial I think I'm going to make in this small session. I'll probably be making more in the future. Hopefully I'm better at it by that point. Um, but this is going to be about the mass component script that you can attach to your own prefab. So I'm going to go back to the tools menu and remind everyone that you can add the component script by clicking add mass script to prefabs. You select your prefabs folder, you click select folder and it adds it. I'm not doing it now because I already have it added to mine. Also, um, <clears throat> once you're done with everything, if you're not already going to merge it, um, you can actually remove the mass components from anything you have selected in your hierarchy. So if I actually were to choose this parent and remove mass components, it removes the component off of each one of these blocks. So actually, I think that may be due to something different. Let's see here. Oh, it says removed component. My apologies. Yeah, so it did actually remove it. I'm not certain why it actually is not actually still on it, but it, I mean, why it actually shows anything, but it does say it's removed from it. Oh, because it's on the original prefab still. That makes sense. All right. So especially when you merge something, um, it, it won't, uh, it wouldn't show on there anyways. So it's, I guess that's one of the modifications that you can apply to a game object. It actually just removes it that way, um, where it still shows that it could, that it was on there. And I would imagine it looks like, yeah, so you can actually revert it back and apply it back directly from there. That's actually kind of handy, Unity. All right, so I'm going to go through the game objects themselves, or at least a couple. I want to show you how these can be utilized. So I'm going to go to under prefabs. I'm going to go to my props. These com this comes with the actual kit itself, so you can look at these yourself. So I'm going to go to the border, which is this little square block I made. don't know why I called it a border. I guess that's the closest thing it could be. And under the mass component script, all right, the category ID, I'm going to skip that for now. I'm going to get to that when I get to the trees. So first of all, you have place inside others. So if that's checked, this object can be actually placed in the same location as another game object. I do not want that to happen with this particular one because this is considered a solid object. Nothing would ever stick into it like grass, like a fence post in a grass or anything like that. Though basically what this means is if this is checked for either this object or the object being placed in this, um, so either or, if it's on for one, for the game object you're placing into or the game object you're placing into it, it would actually place it inside of it. But if both game objects have this unchecked, then they cannot occupy, occupy the same space, so it wouldn't even try to place it. Okay, so scalable is actually where you can stretch the game object. So I'm gonna turn this on for just a moment to demonstrate this. I mentioned this earlier in the paint tool. I'm going to select the same boulder and using the paint area tool, it actually stretched it out as you can see. That's what scalable means. So let me go back to the inspector. That's not meant to be scalable, that shows. All right, so I went over a lot of the randomizer options before, so I'm not going to go into too, too much detail on this, but everything that I showed inside the settings as far as what you can do with the randomizer can be done here. Um, if you want to see those details, just review that video. It's about not quite 10 minutes long. Um, so first of all, all, if this is on, it can be randomized. Now, the reason this one actually does have the option to be randomized is because, actually, that's incorrect. That needs to be set for zero. I do not want that rotated on the X or the Z axis, only on the Y axis. The scale I set to one on the min and the max for everything, so that will never be scaled. And for the position offset, I set it to zero across the board, so that can never be moved. All I wanted is a chance because the four sides are actually a little different, that if you actually did want to place this using the randomizer, so I'll show that off, it actually would randomize the rotation of it. So as you can see, it's a little different over here. Pretty straightforward. All right, so I'm going to go straight to the trees. There's not too much to have to go over with this one, but this is a very useful feature. So I notice I also um, I skipped over the category ID. So I first want to point out that the tree point down, point up, and sphere all use the same category ID of 10. 10, 10, 10. This links them all together by being in the same category. Now under randomizer, um, right under the randomizable uh, flag is replaceable. So if that is, if that is checked, 
it can be used um, to replace another one and it can be replaced itself. So I demonstrated this before, but I'm going to demonstrate this again. Um, also, I'll show that this one is not rotated on the X and Y, uh, X and Z axis, but it can be rotated on the Y axis randomly. Scaled, I put the X and Z to be at 0.75 to 0.15. The Y is actually from 1 to 2. And then for the scale lock, I have it from from a tenth of a, of a of a unit into the ground all the way up to flush with the ground. And then, of course, I use min I like using the minus 0.5 to, to 0.5 because that right there would allow you to place it on the grid and still um, it would need to ever go further than that because that would run to the next block at that point. So I'll show how this works again. I demoed it before, but it doesn't hurt to demo it again. So I selected the, the actual randomizer, selected a tree, and it picks random trees. It's replacing them. It's scaling them. It's doing the offset to them. I mean, I'm not moving the thing and it's offsetting. All right, so it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I think it's simple, but very powerful. There will be changes made to it as I make changes to the randomizer and some other things. Um, and also, if you all have any suggestions, please reach out to me again on my mass discourse server um, or the Fertile Soil Productions Discord server. Just search for our Google for Fertile Soil Productions Discord. Find me there. I'm again on Twitter at, at Soil Fertile. I also have a forum for the mass page on itch. I don't get too many um, messages on there, but I check it all the time. I get notified and I respond to you pretty quickly unless I'm asleep. All right, so I hope these tutorials help out. Um, again, there will be some more in the future. Thank you.